on the kids with special needs and to show that there is a purpose for them also. Once again, here is Fleabag and their theme, I'm Somebody Special. with more Junkanoo coverage after these messages. Born in a ray of light, I am photography. I keep forever young the happy days of childhood and bring back thoughts of years gone by and old time friends. I am the news of the world and bring you visions of far distant lands. Though men may pass and cities crumble, my magic preserves their likeness for generations to come. I am man's servant, yet his master, an art, yet a business. I am photography, and photography is Kodak. I enjoy working, so I like the way Safety Plus works at making protection better. First, with wings, 
And now with these fantastic channels. Only Safety Pest gives me both wings and these channels that keep fluid within the center. Together, they're the best protection ever against side leakage. Channels, wings and all. Safety Plus is the protection I want. We do everything together. In this family, it's just me and Mom. We share responsibilities. We even share clothes. Money's tight. Everything's got to go further. Clothes have got to last, no matter how many times you wash them. Intensified Tide Ultra 2, a unique cleaning system, washes away many tough stains better than leading detergents and helps clean away the fuzz that can make cottons look old. When clothes look new, it's like a whole new attitude. Tide Ultra 2. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be tied. You're watching ZNS Channel 13, the only station bringing you complete live television coverage of the 1998 New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade. Welcome back to Bay Street. I am Michelle Malcolm along with Paula Donical, Judy Terrell, and our guest commentator for this morning, former NJC chairman, Mr. Bill Wallace. Bill, we have seen all of the major groups go by so far. Tell me, in your opinion, what do you think? In fact, what I think has happened is that um, the group that rushes the hardest and participate and performance will be the group that wins because New Year's Day is normally smaller costumes so that they can rush harder. And everybody has good music, so the air is going to be a very tight parade. I noticed one thing that I noticed is that many of the groups downsized. They came out with less numbers out here. There seemed to be better control, particularly in the area of music. Do you think it will be as close this morning as it was last week? I think, I think it'll probably be closer than it was um, on Boxing Day. Closer? Yeah. Yes. Well, you know what? I think you may be right. <laughs> I'm certainly glad that I'm not a judge out here this morning. I mean, we say this every junk canoe, but, but it has never been truer than it has been this morning. The competition seems to be very stiff. You are now looking at what, you know, it's really the tradition of junk canoe, and that is the scrap group. These are just everyday behaviors. They're not affiliated with any particular group. They're out here having themselves a fine old time on this first day of the year, of the new year, 1998. We are now going to join Paula Donical, who is on street level, a little closer to the action than we are. And Paula, what is it feeling like where you are right now? Michelle, one of excitement, I guess. Michelle, one of excitement, I guess everybody is just excited about the second lap. The first lap has gone by and we have seen some rather interesting sights. One of the major problems this morning is the breeze. I mean, the costumes, some of them are blowing all over the place and so I think it's going to be a real problem for a number of the groups. The Saxons had their problems, the Valleys did, um, Roots didn't have it as bad as they started out a little earlier, but I think that is going to be a very, very serious factor in the judging this morning. The breeze is really, as the young people would say, carrying on. Michelle, back to you. Thanks a lot, Paula. It, it did start off as a fairly mild morning this morning, and then all of a sudden, uh, Mother Nature just decided to show herself off, and the breeze just kicked up, and as Paula said, Several of the groups are having a bit of a problem keeping their costumes intact. We are now going to go a little further down on Bay Street where Judy Durrell is standing by. Judy has the uh, distinct advantage of being the first one on the team to see what the groups have to offer. Judy, what does it look like from where you are right now? Well, Michelle, from where I am. We are going to be the program. As we said earlier, most of the, all of the major groups have gone by so far. Still to come are several of the junior groups, more of the scrap groups, and uh, just regular everyday Bahamians out here having themselves a good time. In the meantime, Bill, this gives us a bit of an opportunity to talk about what we noticed with many of the major groups out here this morning, and that is more and more every year we seem to be seeing that carnival influence where you get so many, uh, the feathers and the, the, you know, the glitter and what, what is going to have to happen for us to hold on to what is really the traditional junk canoe? It's a situation where the junk canoe committee and the leaders association have to get together, determine where do we want our culture to go. Do we want to copy Mardi Gras or do we want to keep the simple crepe that we already have? They have to make a big decision as to where we go in terms of junk canoe. You know, one of the things that makes 
Oh, go to Rio. See Carnival. Exactly. So, how do we get our junk canoeers then to understand that yes, while you want to progress and uh, uh, advance in the time, you have to also hold on to what makes junk canoe junk canoe. See, what it takes is pride in knowing that what we have can match anywhere else in the world. Everybody keeps saying it, but he has an opportunity to show it, and nobody appears not to want to show it. This is the only thing that can match anywhere in the world if we keep the crate. But somehow the other day, let me get away to the feathers, the glitter, and the, the Mardi Gras aspect like I call our carnival. Yeah. Well, also, while we're looking at the smaller groups, it, it, it gives us an opportunity to talk about um, something else uh, concerning them. Because, you know, if there was nothing else that we felt when we went into the shacks of uh, the smaller groups was frustration. They are really very frustrated because they're trying very hard to compete with groups that start off with an advantage because of the fact that they have so much more money at their disposal. They're trying very hard to keep the morale of their members up. It's very difficult, as one group leader told us, to come out here year after year after year, and you can't get anything above fourth place. Do we now need to look at some kind of special awards, not necessarily related to the competition itself, but say, an award to a group? for consistency, uh, an award to a group for, for, for keeping, uh, keeping a group of men together. Do you, you understand what I'm going from, with this? Yeah, and, re and really from a community. Exactly. See, there ought to be an award, for example, um, for a group, which is not in the top five, for example, right. who has shown progress in terms of better, improving themselves every year. They ought to be awarded for that. Exactly. One of the things that um, uh, one of the leaders of the Fancy Dancers told us was, you know, they, uh, they've been coming out in the, in the senior category for 10 years. They started off as a junior group. Uh, and as a junior group, they won two straight. They got into the senior category, and they weren't able to, to go any further, it seems, than, than the, the fourth place. And uh, what you get is a lot of frustration, a lot of disappointment. And the problem is they don't want to leave as he put it, they're corner boys. Yeah, because what it is, the Fancy Dancers, for example, represents the group around that Fox, that uh, um, Camp Road area. And it's sort of like a pride group. Exactly. You know, a community group. But it's rather unfortunate that they cannot get the funding. So in fact, I believe between the National Jungle Committee and the Leaders Association or the Jungle Committee themselves, they have to go through some form of funding for all the smaller groups. Exactly. So that, so that you can encourage them. Because the last thing you want to happen is a group that has so much history. For instance, uh, and, and since we're on the Fancy Dancers, I'll talk about them a little bit more. The fact that this group was the first to introduce female dancers on Bay Street. This is um, something that they told us. That they, they introduced the idea of the female dancer on Bay Street. This group has been around for many, many years. And you want to encourage such groups to continue to go on. You don't, you don't want it to die out. Because John Kudu would not be the same Look, without see, them. What happened is... The community group has the spirit of Junkanoo. And exactly. the fact that they're not winning, when I say winning in terms of not coming first, second, third, or right, fourth, right. but they're coming out consistently means that they have the, the spirit of Junkanoo in it themselves. And they're not doing it for the money, but it's, a, it's a, as they call the pride of knowing that they participated in a national cultural event. Well, you're exactly right. And we've got to, as you said, find ways to, 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 to come up with the funding because obviously the groups aren't doing a good job in finding it themselves. I mean, for a, a leader to have to go into a bank and borrow money, uh, which obviously he's going to have to pay back, there's got to be something that can be done to help well, the small But you see, groups. again, somebody has to have a, a direction whereby they can come up with a cooperative effort to purchase bulk crepe paper, for example, right. and so therefore be at a lower cost of individual groups. Right, right. Well, like I said, Debate is never short when it comes to John Canoe as to what needs to be done to help the smaller groups to, you know, encourage everyone to continue to participate. We are going to take a commercial break right here, and when we come back, we'll have more live coverage of the 1998 New Year's Day John Canoe Parade. 
The 1998 New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade will continue after these messages. You're watching the 1998 New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade, live on ZNS Channel 13. Welcome back to our live coverage of the 1998 New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade. I'm Michelle Malcolm along with Paul Zonico, Judy Terrell, and our guest commentator this morning is Mr. Bill Wallace. You are looking at, as we said earlier, the heart and soul of Junkanoo, the scrap group. And you know, the smaller groups are really, as Bill Wallace put it a moment ago, the, the groups that continue to have the heart and soul, the spirit of Junkanoo. Many of them are very, very active, not only on Bay Street, but in changing the lives of the young men that participate in the parades. And we had an opportunity to talk with both small and large group leaders about the impact that Junk Lou is having on the youth today and on the community as a whole. Here's that report. There is no single initiative in this country that is as important as the development of our children. And, and this thing we got called Junkanoo can do it for us. They're called Generation X, a generation without purpose. There is no shortage of negative reports surrounding the activities of today's youth. This, as a debate rages on about who should be doing what to help them. Some say it's the home, others look to the church, and still others blame the government for not doing enough to reach the way with youth. But not many have considered a source that is proving to be effective in both attracting young people and pointing them in the right direction. That source is Junkanoo. The Junkanoo shack, once labeled a poor environment for the impressionable, is undergoing an image change. Increasingly, Junkanoo leaders are understanding that they have a responsibility to nurture the many young minds that look up to them. This shack, unlike most other shacks, it's wholesome, it's clean, and we, we stand for the positives in this shack. Now, I can't say that for some of the others. This is not a grass haven in the Valley Boy Shack. So as a result, we attract a lot of young people. P parents bring their young kids to us, and we're happy here to have them to, to mold them in the traditional Valley Boy patterns. You know, we, we, we have children ourselves, and. We hope our friends will look out for our kids and, and likewise. So we encourage the people, the young people who come in here to do the things that are upright and, and this has been one of the strengths of the organization over the years. Like bees to honey, Junkanoo attracts youth. Gangsters from warring factions have been known to lay down their weapons of war, shun acts of lawlessness, and work side by side in the shacks in their quest to become victors of Junkanoo. So what is it about this art form that induces such a reaction? One contributing factor is the love for the art itself. But a more significant underlying reason is the sense of camaraderie, family, and love that is fostered in the shack. When it was the controversy of the sports center, and we decided we'll close the shack, we were not working. And it was like in the morning when you wake up, you were lost because, look, I'm not going to be with Casey today. I'm not going to be with Dawn, or I'm not going to be with Redneck today because we're not working towards a particular goal. So, like I said, the Saxons has always been brotherly. We are always together year round, in fact. You know, we are always together. So, I think when the Saxons point of it, part of it, is because of the kind of um, relationship we have um, beyond John Canoe. We have gone beyond John Canoe in this thing. We are together year round. Um, all Always somewhere to go. We have a home base where we can go and sit down, watch a video, whatever, whatever. That kind of concept, and I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, the, um, you know, you have guys who are gangs or whatever, and decided to come forward um, and get involved. And they see how you go about it. And you, they look up to individuals in the organization as big brother, big sister, and they want to take that part and they want to be there for that part of things. So they decide, look, we're not going to get involved in this kind of trouble because we won't be able to be there. Barabbas and the tribe is just one junkie group that places as much emphasis on character building as it does on costume building. The organization requires potential members to undergo a screening process, and those accepted into the group are registered. The tribe has grown from its first showing of 85 members to more than 600 in only a year. Barabbas says the fact that his organization was able to bring sworn enemies to the table of brotherly love is in itself an answer to prayer. I wish I could have called some of the, some of the guys' names. If I could call the guys' name, the public could answer to them like that, all right? And they showed me all they needed was love. Uh, you know, we've been together 
no fussing, no fighting. You get to tighter and tighter each day. You can see tension was their first, but now you can see the love. You know, they, the, towards one another. Uh, they, they easing away from that gang stuff. They, they doing, I have them so busy, doing a lot of community work. They don't have time for wine, okay? Uh, they be here every night, they be here late. Sometimes they just eat jam and bread, and that surprised me. Sometimes we don't eat at all in the shop here. We be going through a rough time, but I don't, I, I don't think it's gonna be like this all the time. But uh, it, it, it's, it's been a wonderful togetherness we have here, and it could happen all over this little Bahama life. Just a night or two ago, I was giving one of the young guys a ride someplace, and he said, "You know, I've just came out of the formatory school. I've been there for one year," and he said, "Since I've been around here, I've kept out of trouble." and I'm making some headway inside my life and the robbers have done wonders for me. And I look at him and I said, you know, I remember, I remember you seeing you in the formatory school. It's amazing how people could change. He said, I didn't have no place to go and now I have somewhere to go. And I think that one friend tells another friend and that's where the encouragement comes and the numbers are kept growing in that area and which is a very important area for this group of people. Today's Junkanoo groups have become more community minded. Some of them, like one family, have even incorporated the word community into their names. Gone are the days when the Junkanoo's work could only be seen on Boxing Day and New Year's Day. Today's Junkanoo's are working hard to better their communities year-round. One family's focus has always been to use Junkanoo as a vehicle to get us into the community, to begin to talk about things like reading. And we, we, we participated in the, in the reading program, and we participated in a number of health initiatives in the community. We were the first community organization to see members of the community be immunized for MMR. Last year we had uh, uh, Health of Fawn and uh, Rush for Health and uh, we brought the community to, together in one of the community halls of one of the churches and uh, we brought a number of health organizations together with the community uh, to expose a number of people to uh, the, the issues of health. We want to go in Beanstown and take one or two of the old folks and take the house down and and rebuild a house for that. We want to do things like that. We're gonna, and you're gonna see this happening. Uh, we adopt staple in school. We adopt paraplegics. Uh, we uh, we have so many different institutions we adopt, and they call on us, and we always active. We do a lot of shows in the hotel. Uh, we travel a lot. Uh, you know, we make crafty dolls and drums for the tourists. We always busy. Uh, year round, we make lobster to trap in the yard. We do so many different things uh, and keep the boys focused and they, they, make, they make their dollars, we don't take it, whatever they make, it goes home for them. Junkanoo can be used as a valuable tool because it often gives otherwise idle hands and minds a targeted focus. Perhaps the time has come for both the government and the Junkanooers themselves to consider how Junkanoo and all the good that goes with it can be expanded and spread throughout the year. Take, for example, what Jackson Burnside is doing with his company, Dungalik, or what was accomplished with the recording of the CD, Roots in the Morning. Meanwhile, corporate citizens and others are being urged to lend a helping hand. While many of the larger groups have major sponsors, smaller groups like Barabbas and the Tribe, the Fancy Dancers, and the Mighty Vikings are still struggling to stay afloat without significant financial assistance. And finally, the everyday citizen is being reminded that one person can make a difference. Instead of complaining about what's wrong with our young people, they're being called on to do something to help make it right. I had a good job, love sufficient. I lay tired. I took all my hard earned working money and I put it into them just to help, help my country. These brothers and sisters need help. So if you can even just pop in, send somebody to see what we're doing, to understand. I think if you get out here, get in, in, in the mix with us, you will understand exactly, you know, what we're going through, and you will understand, and you will see the changes. Trust me, not as I, just as I speak, you'll see the changes in these young fellas. So I'll ask you, if, just take a minute of your time. Just take a minute of your time to probably pop in, or send someone down, find out what we're doing. Even if you got to send spy, send a spy. But get down here and get in the mix. Get involved with these young kids. Don't just push them off. Don't just look at a brother and say he's bad. He isn't. He just needs love. He or she needs a little love. And you will be surprised to see the changes in this country. Food for thought. Food for thought. Uh, words by Barabbas and other leaders of Junkanoo groups 
who put so much effort into affecting the lives of the young men and women that come to them. And as many of them have said, they come seeking love, they come seeking understanding, and really direction. And, I, and we're finding that John Canoe more and more is providing that. Real quickly, Bill, do we need to see more of a cooperative effort from everyone involved to, to sort of take John Canoe to the level where it does become more uh, of a community-minded uh, thing? I'm saying that that's what it's doing now with the young people, and it can't do so much more. It can go more organized. See, it's important that we do that because in a few years' time, these fellas will be off the scene and the young ones will be on the scene. Right. If they're not there, then they can't be on the scene. So it's important that the, 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 the programs that Barabbas and those and the one family have done, that all groups follow that. Because that is how they can direct the young men into the right direction in terms of positive things as opposed to the negative ones. Well, coming up next is the Roots organization. Their theme once again on Bay Street this morning, Splendors of the Far East. Paula Donical now is standing by with the leader of Roots, Mr. Paul Knowles. Paulette? Michelle, I am standing with Mr. Knowles, but one of the things we must note first is that the parade appears to be on time more so than Boxing Day morning. We are now seeing the start of the second lap and Boxing Day morning we were just trying to complete the end of the first lap. How do you feel um, your group did for the first lap and make ready to make the second? I think our first lap was very good. It was an excellent first lap. Our costumes were very well put together. We were very prepared for it. The group was mainly ready this morning and I thought the sound was good. Very good. You had some concerns earlier and Mr. Stubbs sort of um, corrected that and said that the, any lateness would be taken care of. I, do you feel better about that? Yeah, I feel a little bit better. What happened is that we saw a number of judges coming onto the parade when our group was about to cross Ralston Square. But quite naturally, we were a bit concerned as to why these judges were coming on late. We were assured by the committee that those judges were judging categories that would not affect our group. And so you're very confident that you will do better than Boxing Day? Well, you can look in the background and you can hear the sound, you can see the costumes. I think we're, we're the only complete group out here this morning. Very well put together, very colorful. We think we're going to win the parade. Sounds good. And, and there you hear it from the leader. And it's very, very important to Roots to win this parade because last New Year's Day morning they came third. Last Boxing Day they What's came that? third. And it's very, very important for them to win this morning's parade. Michelle, back to you. Thank you, Paulette. Well, as you can see on your screen, the Roots Junkanoo group is well into their second lap. Their theme this morning, Splendors of the Far East. It's inspired by the new relationship between the Bahamas and China. Roots has decided to present this New Year's Day costumes, color, and excitement of the culture of countries of the Far East. And all of the countries shall, all of the costumes that is, shall illustrate the customs, culture, and heritage of the various countries. They will represent religion, politics, drama, and scenery. Once again, Roots Junkanoo Group, Splendors of the Far East.
rap group Sting comes here on Bay Street this morning saying farewell to the Obeah man. We are going to say farewell, but only for a very brief moment. We'll take a commercial break, and when we come back, we'll have more live coverage of the 1998 New Year's Day Junkin' Parade after this. We'll be back with more live coverage of the 1998 New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade in a moment. Now, back to more Junkanoo live from Bay Street in downtown Nassau. Welcome back to the show. I'm Michelle Malcolm, along with Paul Edzonical, Judy Terrell, and our guest commentator for this morning is Mr. Bill Wallace, former National Junkanoo Committee Chairman. And I must say, Bill, that uh, the parade seems to be going by very, very quickly and smoothly this morning. It seems that everybody's going to comfortably get a, a second lap. I think what they're trying to do is get in a second and also a third lap. Most of them will probably get a third lap, at least the first four groups. Yeah, which is um, quite unusual, I would say. Is, do you think that's because of the, the downsizing or just good organization? What, what do you think is making it move so quickly? No, it's basically the fact that New Year's, the, the costumes are not as big as the Boxing Day. And the, um, there's more rushing, natural rushing in, in the, in the uh, New Year's parade. So that is the reason for the um, speed up of the parade. Well, I don't know how you feel, but I give Sting my vote for best music. Well, Sting is the only group so far with no brass. Strictly, <laughs> strictly music, Junkano music. All the time Junkano music. Yes, that. The, the music from the uh, serious Junkano fellows. You are now looking at Barabbas and the tribe. Once again, their theme this morning is a glorious celebration of Noah and the morning after. And the tribe has chosen to honor Noah because consideration of his surroundings they say the magnitude of the work he was called on to perform and the many years spent in hard work he stands unsurpassed if not unequaled among all the characters of the bible in persistent faith and so they have decided this morning to pay tribute to noah once again barabbas and the tribe
Boston Square where the thick of the crowd is and I'm standing behind all different supporters. Do we have any valleys in the house? What about room? I tell you, as you move down, each of the groups have their different cheering crowds. And if we could just get right in here. Do we have any family in the house? What about Saxons? I tell you there is an uproar of crowds as Barabbas and the tribe make their second up. There is a little bit of everybody in Watson Square. Somebody said to me, don't forget fancy dancers and, and all of the other smaller groups. So we're all here in Watson Square and I tell you the crowd support is overwhelming. Back to you, Michelle.
Carlos, how do you feel about the second lap this morning? Oh, I feel excellent, Paul. I feel excellent. We can upset everything this morning. We're going to make the judging system easier this morning. Although you don't have a sponsor, you've come out and you look just as good as the groups that have sponsors over $50,000. How, how do you respond to that? Uh, Paul, we work hard at it. It's a uh, community effort. It's a team effort. I love those guys. They was me all the way. They was with me all the way from start to finish. And this is what we got here this morning. And we'll be back at them which ones or not. Barabbas from Barabbas and the
1998 New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade will continue after these messages. You're watching the 1998 New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade, live on ZNS Channel 13. Welcome back to downtown Nassau, where, where we are bringing you live coverage of the 1998 New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade. And if you're just joining us, Happy New Year to you and yours. You would have just seen Barabbas and the tribe, their theme here on Bay Street this morning, a glorious celebration of Noah the morning after. We're going to give you an opportunity now to get to know Barabbas and his folks a little bit better. Here now is our report on Barabbas and the tribe. Tries for nothing in your belly. That's for the big boys. The Rabbis and the tribe have put their disappointing fifth place Boxing Day finish behind them and once again are reaching for the brass ring. We are going to win the New Year's Day Parade. We're going to come back in 1998 and we're going to win the Boxing Day and the next New Year's Day Parade. Trust me, that's what, that's what you're going to expect from the tribes, along with the best music and best costume. Their theme this morning is a glorious celebration of Noah the morning after. Using the creativity of Junkanoo art, the tribe is seeking to bring to Bay Street highlights of the life story of the biblical patriarch. The theme you can see from the banner straight to the back line, you, a little child could tell exactly what's going on. It's going to be just how the animals celebrating, we're going to be celebrating that day because we know we're going to beat those big boys. Without the door. They're hoping that, with a little help from the animal kingdom and the man of faith, they will walk away with the top costume awards. The Wally did it the other day, the one-two punch, first and second best costume. You get George, everybody know George, uh, best costume, everybody know Kalaloo, and everybody know Edward, what they call Rock, who won the most best costume in the last decade. So Edward have the two best pieces that they're going to see on, in a couple of days. The best banner for sure, off the shoulder dancers, for sure. We're gonna be a hog in this one, so it's, <laughs> this is it's over, it's over guys. After rocking Bay Street on Boxing Day, the tribe is promising even better music in this parade. That's gonna be tighter than ever, okay, because we on a high, we rushing behind roots, and you know, that's my old group, so that gave us a high right there, so the music's gonna be excellent. It's gonna step up a lot. We get some moose skin, uh, some moose skin drums, we get the goat skin drums, we get the tom tom drums, and we get the cow skin drums. And we're the only group in the Bahamas of that. So that's why our music is different. And for them to catch with that, and actually I make the drums, so 
And I know we have some drums with some bottoms in. We, we outsmart them. It's, we in the year 2000 before them. Now they admit that they didn't have sufficient costumes in the Boxing Day Parade to be considered a contender. They felt they deserved a higher placing in the best music. And the boys here just didn't jump in. Music. And we had an excellent banner. Uh, but we coming back, uh, our spirits are high, the morale is high, and we believe that we could beat the Saxons. Uh, we can stop the force rate for sure. So we can beat the Saxons and we can change the jungle and whirl around. You've been listening to Barabbas, leader of Barabbas and the Tribe, uh, one of the young and upcoming groups here on Bay Street. Uh, this is, I think, their um, second year competing. Last year was the first time the Barabbas and the Tribe came out on Bay Street, and they made an impressive showing then, and they're making an impressive showing now. Obviously, they are a group to watch in the future. You see, whenever a group breaks off from another group, um, if you take some of the um, constructionists, costume designers, then they can compete. But, for example, the problem we have now is how do we transfer the technology to not only the, the, the groups in Nassau, because the National Jungle Committee has responsibility for the, all of Jungle Canoe in the Bahamas. Right. And you're talking about the family islands also, because if, it's, if this is our national culture, Good our point. national heritage, it has to go throughout the, the whole of the Bahamas. And not just transferring the technology, but I guess standardizing the quality of that, the country. That's correct. You see, because what you need is a situation whereby some of the major groups from here go to the family islands and show them how it's done. So, you know, they ought not, in other words, try to level the playing field. Now, except for the money factor, the family islands will still be far behind. And the money factor, again, is a major issue. We could talk about it all morning, um, but that won't be necessary. One Family is the group that's coming up next. They're still quite a ways down on, on Bay Street. Their theme is One Bahamas celebrating our silver anniversary of independence. But we are now going to see if we can reach Paul at Zonical because once again the issue of crowd control is one that has been receiving attention here this morning. For a while there it seemed that the, that, uh, the problem was you know, well under hand, but we understand there may be some difficulty. Paulette? Michelle, there appears to be some difficulty. I spoke with one of the senior officers out here just a moment ago, and he said that there are reported skirmishes down the way by Charlotte Street and coming up by John Bull and all those other stores. Um, you know, earlier in the week I spoke with the Commissioner of Police and I asked him about Boxing Day problems, and he said one of the things is about Jankunu, there will always be the conflict, the tight crowds moving through, there's always a, a chance that there might be a problem. And I think that's what's happening. But overall, they claim they have it under control. But we have seen some persons who are just leaving who do not want to take a chance of getting hurt. Um, we saw one gentleman passed, and he had blood draining down his face. He was taking, being taken to get some medical care. And so we hope that he's just one of the few persons who may have been hurt here this morning. Michelle, back to you. Thank you, Paulette. And of course, we're hoping that our, all of our team down there, Paulette Zonical, Judy Terrell, and all of the crew, are kept safe throughout the morning. You know, we have to do a job here, but we'd like to make sure that everybody gets through 1998 unscathed. We are now going to show you some more footage of uh, the Roots uh, Junkanoo group as they um, made their presentation here on Bay Street this morning. And um, after that, perhaps we'll be ready. Um, hopefully one family will be a little closer and you can then take a look at their presentation. But in the meanwhile, here is Roots.
watching a presentation of Roots here on Bay Street earlier this morning. Still to come, one family with their second lap. Their theme, One Bahamas, celebrating our silver anniversary of independence. We're going to give you an opportunity now to hear what leader Jackson Burnside has to say after what was a bit of a disappointment for the group in their performance on Boxing Day. Here's that report. With the motto, never say die, to inspire them, one family intends to take nothing less than first in the New Year's Day parade. With their theme, One Bahamas, 25 Years of Independence, group leader Jackson Burnside says they hope to cause Bahamians to focus on the value of our nation's independence as we enter a new year of nation building. You're going to see the transition from colonial rule to independence. You're going to see the change in the flag, and you're going to see the change in the guard, and you're going to see the fireworks, and uh, you're going to lift your head to the rising sun. You'll see the rising sun, and you'll see the, uh, the road we trod leads unto our God, and you will see all those pieces played out and depicted throughout the parade. And we will also pay honor and homage to some of our, our heroes uh, over the years uh, who, who have contributed over the last 25 years to our growth uh, as a Bahamian nation. Uh, you, you will see us uh, paying homage to our governor generals uh, and we will pay particular uh, uh, homage to uh, the the fallen heroes um, uh, of the HMBS Flamingo and and, uh, and, and, and the yeah, recent seamen that we, we lost in, in defense of the country. Traditionally, the New Year's Day parades pack less of a punch than the Boxing Day parade. But Burnside says, beware, one family is about to break with tradition. I believe that uh, one family is going to shock the market because most people believe we're not coming back. Uh, there's a rumor around that we roll over and died. There's a rumor around that uh, that I I fold up and I'm in bed and half of the group's gone to the uh, the Saxons and some of the group gone to the tribe and this they, and and they're gonna get a shot, you know? Because when we step out there, brand new and fresh now. This is fresh, 100% grade A homogenized jungle Not that. Not that stuff that, that, um, that the mother fellas, I ain't call no names. The mother fellas carry their costumes back, tear a piece off, and stick next piece on. And watch for it. See, now, an educated judge would know that immediately. What you're going to see from one family is brand new, fresh costumes from the scratch. You know, and, 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 and that is going to make a difference. Jackson, who advocates for the full education of judges on the fundamentals of Junkanoo, said the group does not have a problem with the judges, but he said brand names may have more to do with selecting winners. Uh, I'm not one to say that, that, that we have a, a, a problem with the, uh, the, the, with the judges that we have there, with, the, with, with their, their um, ability to be fair. I think that they just are not exposed sufficiently. Regardless of whether you have Bahamian judges or international judges, you're going to have to educate them. And they're going to have to learn and understand what are the difficulties that we're going through to be able to produce what we produce. You can't uh, have somebody taking shortcuts and that being seen by the judges as being excellence. You know, we love a name. You know, when we see Victoria's Secret, we believe it even smell good. Right? I mean, that's the way it go. Right? You see Nike, you figure you can jump taller and higher because it's got Nike on. It's not, you know, you don't feel as if it's, it's within you. So when they see the names of those 30-year-old groups, you know, the one who's celebrating their 40 years now, and uh, the one that's about 35 years old, when they see them, they immediately believe, well, this must be the true, true thing. And when they see us come in, they say, well, oh, yeah, well, these fellas just reach. Throw them on fourth or fifth, because we really won't take no time to think about how powerful they are. What are your feelings on the National Junkanoo Committee becoming an independent body and starting their work from January when you guys start? Well, uh, I, I think there's a lot of merit in, in that. I, I definitely think that uh, whether they are an independent body or they are a body that continues to be related directly to government, they need to start their job when we start. 
and they need to be given all the resources necessary to be able to to do what they have to do. They've got to have the fax machines and the telephones and the internet access and all the things that we uh, access to be able to do the things that we do. You know, they, they, they need to, to be in a position to study, they need to be able to understand what the new materials are, what the methods of construction uh, is that's, that's going on, uh, how, how, how difficult it is to do some of the things that we do both in the art and in the music of the parade and the performance and the organization of the parade. They need to really seriously study those things. You've been listening to Jackson Burnside, leader of One Family, John Canoe and Community Organization. And let's talk about something that Jackson mentioned um, as we see now One Family getting closer and closer. The education of the judges. How much actually goes into that process? Does more need to be done on the part of the National John Canoe Committee to make sure that you do have judges who are well first, well educated on what it takes to get to Bay Street for a John Canoe group? I think um, the judges are subjective. Judging is subjective. And the thing about judging is this. Um, if you do the job properly, mm -hmm. the point is the, the, the presentation will be seen by the judges. Now, the, 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 you know, I know they always had workshops in terms of what to look for and what have you. But like everything else, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And it's impossible because of subjectivity that you can grade a judging process. But what they can do as a sort of macro aspect, right, is to look at the scores mm -hmm. and see whether or not any, any judge per se is over or, you know, way out of line. Right. If, they, if all the judges are in line, well, that, that's the way it is. And I think the difficulty that you have is that the only way, based on what his argument is, this could be done, is that for all the persons who construct costumes, mm -hmm. be the judges. And let's see how that will work. The point is, it will not work because, again, you're going to have the subjectivity that yes. comes into the, the equation. Obvious bias. Yes. Well, <sighs> Again, more debate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's what it's all about. And keep doing it until you get it right. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. You are now looking at One Family, John Canoe and Community Organization. Their theme, One Bahamas Celebrating Our Silver Anniversary of Independence. And we are now going to join them in their second lap here on Bay Street this morning.
Fellas, how do you feel about the second lap this morning? Let the people enjoy it. Let the people be the judge. Some of your members on the first lap are saying they robbed you on Boxing Day. They can't take it from you this morning. Come back to get our things. That's it. Just as simple as that. Come back to get our things. 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 Come back to get our